Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie. I know. So Fenty Beauty kind of did the most random unexpected thing. They launched a powder foundation. These oh, bags. that? Yes, people are thinking. Really, oh, that? Oh, you, are you serious? Yeah. 2018 and 2019 were major years for complexion. The fact that not only are they giving us something new in complexion, but it's also powder foundation. And I, I, I'm gonna be very honest. I don't remember the last time anybody's checked for or asked for a powder foundation. So this is definitely a bit of a pivot. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean it was a little unexpected, right? This is the soft matte powder foundation. And I also have some of their new lip creams, which I'm gonna be testing out in today's video. Today's video is also gonna be done in partnership with Belief. The homies at Belief, the girls have been keeping me scaly and ash free all season, especially right now, more than ever. Yes, even though I'm indoors, it's incredibly dry here in California. So without further ado, let's jump right in. <coughs> this is a powder foundation, okay? That means skincare for today is gonna be crucial. I have the True Cream Moisturizing Balm and then I also have the True Cream Aqua Balm. Now you're probably wondering why I'm showing you this. Why should you care? Why are we talking about this? Moisturizer I think has been the most important part of my routine this season. And because we are gonna be reviewing a powder product, I feel like we need to like really differentiate the differences between these two. The Aqua Balm is a gel-based moisturizer and the True Cream Moisture Balm is a cream-based moisturizer. The thing with powder foundations are sometimes for dry skin, they're not the best. And because I have oily combination skin, oily and shiny right here, dry to normal around here, I think I'm going to go with the moisturizing balm because it will pump a little bit more hydration into my skin right now. Even though I have oily skin, I find moisturizing incredibly important throughout all types of year, all seasons. So I just put a little bit on my skin and a lot of people ask me like, do you always put on that much? I think when I'm like demoing, these products like on Instagram and like in stories, I tend to kind of like play up how much of the product that I use because it's like aesthetically pleasing and it just makes the video more enjoyable to watch. Wearing a lot of moisturizer isn't necessarily a bad thing. Don't be shy, put some more. Even though some parts of my skin are oily and as you can see, as I'm applying this into my skin, it's soaked right in. There's no like ashy film, even though it is a cream, you don't see it like sitting on top of my skin, like it just soaks right in. Usually if I wasn't like fully dressed, like I would do this right out of the shower and I would put whatever is left over on my neck and on my chest and on my hands, especially in them cracks, girl get, girl, get them cracks. We may not see your jawline because you're wearing a mask, but we definitely see the cracks in between your fingers. Mm-hmm, get them and the knuckles. What I love about a lot of Belize moisturizers is just like the innovation, the K-beauty-ness of it all. I mean, there's literally something for all skin types in all of their collections. Their moisturizers, I think, are also very giftable because they are a little bit on the pricey side, but that means if you have a homie that's already kind of interested in the brand, you can just give them like one of the current holiday sets that they have going on right now. The holiday sets that they have right now are very giftable. If you have a friend, homie, relative, girlfriend that watches my videos and is interested in this brand, but you know, maybe they don't wanna cough up the coins, then you can gift them. They are full size gift sets of the Moisturizing Balm and the Aqua Balm right now in Sephora that will pretty much give you this and like four other travel size products for free. Now to be honest with you, of the two, I can't really decide which one I like best. I really feel like it just depends on what I did the night before, if I've done a treatment, if my skin's feeling a little drier that day. The Moisturizing Balm is definitely gonna give you more moisture and the Aqua Balm is definitely gonna give you more moisture balance, I should say. Even though they both do that anyway, one is just a little bit more, I think, ideal for oily skin types, like the Aqua Balm, because it's gel-based and it's a little bit more lighter, more waterier. And then the creamier is when like, I just need a little extra nourishment, a little bit extra hydration. I just wanna bump it up but a little bit of a, a little bit of a notch, a little bit of a notch. This also, to me, reminds me a lot of the same consistency as the eye cream. So if you like the consistency, the texture, the finish, and all of that of their eye cream, then you'll also really like the moisturizing balm. Both of these creams have an incredible finish for winter honey, and I haven't heard a single person say anything negative about either of these formulas at all. I really love this brand. A lot of you guys are constantly 
raving about it whenever I post about them. So it really is just the perfect way to prep the skin for the products we're gonna be talking about today, which are the Fenty Beauty powders. As usual, I'm gonna have a link down below to where you can purchase these products. Shout out to Believe for being such an amazing partner, supporting my channel. You know, as a black creator, sometimes it's hard to come across really good quality sponsorships. So I really do appreciate the constant support from not only Believe, but from you guys. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into priming our skin because once again, skin prep is crucial for powder foundations. This is definitely a little bit out of my element. For me, I am definitely a liquid or a cream girl. Like powder, girl, powder? We doing powder today. Okay, that's what's up. So yeah, I'm using Fenty's Pro Filter Hydra. Why did I use the hydrating one? I could have sworn I had the matte one, but it's fine. I'll probably put it on, who cares, whatever. It's gonna be a lot of hydration today. <laughs> But you know what, with powder though, like, I mean, it's powder. Like we wear powder to cut down on shine. So we'll see how that works out a little bit later. I'm all about balancing the skin. So if I wear a really heavy cream or really heavy moisturizer, you know, roll with ice, I like to balance that out by wearing a semi blurry matte primer, just so that there's a little bit of like, one is working with the other, one is moisturizing my skin, one is protecting the longevity of the makeup. For the primer, it's fine. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to make it work. Okay, so look at my ow. So I do have this little pamphlet and according to Fenty Beauty's website, we have 50 new shades of this flawless skin on the fly powder. It's supposed to be blurring, long wear, non cakey, light as air, no flashback, crease resistant. It's resistant, I'll be the judge of that. Sweat resistant and humidity resistant. Okay, I believe the last two claims because that's literally what powder does. There are such things as hydrating powders, but we ain't gonna get into that today. That's another topic for another video. I'm not doing a video on that, I'm just saying. <laughs> They also walk you through different tools you can use with the powder depending on what coverage you want or what finish you want. And so for a lighter coverage, you obviously want to use, well, sorry if that's, that's not, that may not be obvious to some of you. If you want a lighter coverage and you're using a powder foundation, you would want to use a brush that is a little bit more fluffy, not as compacted or not as tight. The wider the bristles are, I should say, like the fluffier it is and the more softer it is, usually the more like lighter airbrush finish you're gonna get versus like a tighter, really dense up brush, such as their Foundation 115. This is something that's gonna get you a little bit more coverage, something that you can like really pat into the skin. You can't really pat and build up with a brush like this. Like I literally use this for like blush and stuff. But anyway, they sent me three shades and no planet or, or stratosphere do I ever think I'll be 385. I, I don't think I'm ever going to even touch the any part, any parameter, any, parameter within the 300 series from Fenty, but they did send it and it looks like this. I think that sometimes powder can also be deceiving, but I can clearly, as they see, this is not my color. My actual color though is 420, which is what they sent me because I feel amongst the three they've sent me, this is probably gonna be the closest. I'm gonna test out this product for today's review. And then I also have 430. And if my memory serves me correctly, 430 has a red undertone and I tend to go for like either golden olive. Yeah, golden olive. Neither of these I believe serve that. So 420 it is. When you open the powder, you have a really small compact design. As you can see, the Fenty Beauty logo is stamped right into the powder. And then when you flip her up, you get a sponge applicator which I'm not gonna use. I mean, I'd probably use that for touch up, but to be honest with you, I don't I don't wanna touch up a powder foundation. In fact, I don't wanna touch up foundation or any part of my makeup at all. I tolerate doing my lips. The idea that this is supposed to be like, yeah, full coverage, and you can also use this on the go, would not personally be ideal for me. That's just my opinion though. Everybody got an opinion, everybody got something to say, everybody. So let's talk about the pros and cons of powder foundations. One, they tend to be amazing for oily skin, hotter climates, sweaty skin types. I don't sweat on my face. I'm more of like a just, it's just oily. Sweat and oil are two very different things. Sweat glands and sebum, not the same thing. So, you know, when I say oil control, that's actively what I'm looking for. And powder does tend to do that. So that's a great thing. The fact that it comes in 50 shades, not bad. I think that's one of the first of its kind for a powder foundation. I've never seen that from any other brand. So shout out to Fenty for doing that. Powder also tends to transfer less. Whereas liquid, you put it on and, 
<laughs> you know the drill with liquid because I'm constantly showing you guys and sharing tips on how to keep your makeup in place. Like it's a liquid. That's what liquids scientifically do. They move around, they don't stay put. So with powder, you have a little bit more of advantage of keeping the product in place. So that may be like a pro for a lot of different reasons. However, one of the cons for me with powder is as somebody who has dark skin and I have typical features of like what a lot of people who have darker skin have, I find that it's a little tricky sometimes getting like a really good match with powder foundations. For example, with a powder, I may need to color correct. I'm probably gonna end up having to do that today. That's why I have my Pro Filter Concealers. I have the shade 410 from the Pro Filter Concealer and the reason why I had to buzz out this concealer job because I'm gonna have to color correct. The powder alone is not gonna make my face all look even and balanced the way that I would want it to in a foundation product. Oh, that was the wrong shade, my bad. I gotta go get the other one. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of 430 because it has this really fiery hot orange undertone and I need to color correct. But first, let me, let me get this booger, hold on. Back to what I was saying. So with powder, you really gotta like put in a little extra effort to get a, a really even match because it's just that one layer of powder and it's not as much depth as you can get with like a liquid or a cream product and that's just what it is. You also have to do like a lot of spot treating if you have blemishes on your skin, if you have uneven skin Tone. And by the way, with powder, you would do this the opposite way that you would like a liquid or a cream. You would do all of your liquid products first, concealer, contour, all of that good stuff. And then you'd apply the powder foundation and then you'd set everything if you need to, which is what I'm gonna do pretty much in today's video. Oh, hold up, let me zoom in. I need coverage. So I'm blending out a little bit of that concealer around my mouth. I'm already happy with how this looks on its own. I'm gonna do some contouring and highlighting because as I mentioned, we always wanna do that before we do powder. Usually I like to set my face with translucent powder on top of my primer, but since we're wearing a powder foundation, there's kind of no point in doing that. It's about to be just powder, so like, what's the point? Then I'm gonna highlight with 390 from the concealer and now I'm highlighting with a little bit of 390. Wait, no, I wanted to use 410. Ah! I meant to use 410, y'all, my bad. This was a little bit more golden. 390 is a little bit more red. Oh my God, I'm so shiny. I'm trying not to stress. I'm gonna use this brush. This is from Joy Adenuga, her new brush collection. Congrats, Joy, on these amazing brushes. The quality is insane. These remind me a lot of some of my Sigma brushes, and if you use Sigma, you know their quality is pretty top tier. They feel really sturdy, really luxe. They're very heavy, and I'm gonna be using this one. This one, oh, 005, perfect. Brushes by Joy, 005 brush. These are also incredibly, incredibly soft. Now I'm blending out my concealer using my sponge. Now when you do this, blend this concealer all the way into your contour. So there's like no big stark difference. Oh, the thing with powder foundation is like when I'm using liquid, I can always like add more concealer afterwards if I feel like I didn't get enough under eye coverage. But with powder, once I put the powder on, it's kind of hard to go back. This ain't like translucent powder. This is a powder foundation. It's formulated differently. It's got more coverage. It's got more opacity to it. So once you do this, Make sure you're done with everything else liquid, cause you better be, cause ain't no take backs. Also gonna make it a point to spot conceal any little blemishes or marks that I still see on top of what I have now, with just a little bit of concealer. See, this actually requires quite a bit of skin prep to get a no makeup makeup look if that's what you're going for. So just keep that in mind, cause even though you know I'm queen of multiple steps, I love a good skin prep, I love building a beautiful base with powder. It's not necessarily an easier or quicker alternative as you probably might think it would be. For blush, I'm gonna add a cream. So I'm gonna put this on underneath the foundation. I'm gonna use a little bit of Petal Pop and I did do a full review on all of these cream blushes if you'd like to see it. I will link it in the description box as well. And you know you ain't doing nothing else anyway, so you might as well watch another video after this one. Tell the truth, Shane the Devil sis, you know you ain't going nowhere. Okay, so we just wanna add a little bit of a rosy coral leaf blush to them cheeks though. I love the way liquid and cream blush looks underneath foundation. I think it's the most flawless, beautiful, just peekaboo of color. Okay, it can only go up from here because I feel like the skin already looks good. Not perfect, but it looks good. Like we have created the perfect environment for a powder foundation. Now remember what I said earlier, looser brush means less coverage, a little bit more airbrushed, lighter finish, lighter texture, lighter coverage. Whereas a thicker brush like this one, is gonna be more coverage, more blurred, more flawlessness. I'm not really a fan of this brush in particular from Fenty, so instead I'm gonna actually use one of Joy's. So instead I'm actually gonna use one of Joy's brushes, but they pretty much do the same thing. This one I think just has a little bit more movement and a little bit more control. It's her 002 foundation brush. I'm pretty sure she probably designed this for liquid, but it's a dual fiber, so I feel like I can get away with doing both. So I'm going in with 490, the powder foundation. I'm gonna give my brush a good stipple or two, and I'm just gonna pat that into my skin. Y'all do something. 
don't know if I see nothing yet. There's definitely, whoa. That's a lot of coverage. So far, I definitely see a lot of coverage from this powder, maybe a lot more than I expected. The only thing though, is I feel like the powder is just kind of sitting on top of my skin. And this is probably one of the things I don't really care for about powder foundations is they literally just kind of sit on top of the skin. I'm gonna blend this in real time so you guys can decide if you like the way that this looks. Whereas liquids and creams, you can really kind of like push them into the skin, get a little bit better blendability but I'm definitely seeing the coverage. I'm literally watching the blemishes on this side of my face disappear as I add this powder. Not bad, not bad. Okay, now I'm gonna work my way upward. I'm going to go around my concealed areas, just adding a light veil. I'm still gonna conceal. I'm still gonna set all this with translucent powder, but this is just in the meantime, just so that everything flows and looks cohesive. I'm not gonna fully blend that powder all over the concealer because we highlighted that for a reason, duh. I think that one of the other tricky things with powder is sometimes it's really hard to control powder products. It really is. With liquid and cream, you can see exactly where the product is applied. You can see exactly the spots that you missed. There's a very obvious difference where sometimes with powder, you keep piling it on and then you're like, okay, I missed a spot. And then you apply more and you apply more, you apply more, pretty much you put on half the compact on your face, but you didn't realize like, uh, that's not a full coverage powder. So why did you do all that? Whereas with liquids and creams, I feel like a lot of times they show you what they are right when you put them on. And also sometimes powder gives me the bare mineral vibes, but you know what? So far, I don't think it looks, I don't think it looks bad at all actually. Ooh, I would have loved to have seen this be like a cream, like a cream to powder formula, like the one that Iman carries. Iman carries this beautiful like, cream to powder formula powders that I think you can also like wet in the pan if I remember correctly. Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. There's a brand, I, I think, I feel like it might be a mom, but she has like a cream and powder product that works really, really good for people who have trouble with powder because powder takes a little bit of a learning curve. I'm not gonna lie, but so far, I'm actually not mad at it. I think it looks kind of pretty. I'm gonna step back and show you guys the hand test. How does the match look? Do we think she's, is she, is she giving flawlessness? I feel like this side of my face definitely looks blurred. I feel like I see the flawlessness that this powder speaks to on this side. Because my monitor's on this side, I don't know what this side of my face looks like except for what I see in the mirror. I feel like I need to put, I think I need to add a little bit more here. And this is kind of what I was talking about. Like with powder, it's really easy to miss spots. It really is. And I don't know any other way to like describe that, but like it's just easy to miss spots because you can't tell where the powder stops and where it begins. I just set my under eye highlight with translucent powder and I'm not gonna lie, I still feel this need to just kind of do like a light veil all over my skin because we have prepped the skin so well and this powder isn't exactly matte in finish in my opinion, well, what does it say it's described as? Because I feel like it has kind of like a satin matte finish in my opinion, but Fenty describes this as I mean, it does say it is a part of the soft matte line, so I'm assuming they're considering this matte. It also could just be that because I applied this with a brush, like I'm not really getting that super flawless pressed in finish that I would expect for most powders. It's the sponge that's really kind of stamping it in for me. Now, when thinking about that powder foundation, baby, it sure does make putting on my brows a lot easier because honey, you know when you get the liquid foundation like all over your brows and then you gotta like put, y'all know what I mean. I'm not a brows before a foundation type of gal. I'll do it if I have to, but I'm just saying it is kind of nice to have a whole different kind of texture. It's basically like applying the product on your bare skin because the skin is so matte and it's so smooth. This is my first time using this and it's gorgeous. It is the Rose Rave, one of her new diamond bombs. I don't know why. I've just been sleeping on this one. It's been sitting in my collection ever since I got it in PR. I don't know how many months ago, but it's really, really pretty. And that says a lot, considering the fact that I have not been checking for highlighter like that. I, I really like this, it's so pretty. Giving you B-roll, honey, because <laughs> this lip color got my teeth looking white. Is she giving you campaign? Is she giving you beauty commercial commercial face? Ciao. Okay, I'm out of here, y'all. I'm gonna check back in with you a little bit later, maybe in like six hours, since I've already been wearing this powder foundation for two. So, be right back. All right, y'all. So I'm back. It's about to be ten. Look, it's late. I know where I last ended. It was about five. But remember, factoring in the fact that I put this powder on around two, this really has been kind of like an all-day wear for me. I think my skin looks really, really, really good. Oh, that's good for you, baby. Even though I have oily skin, despite that, I just feel like my skin has this really 
beautiful, healthy glow. I haven't blotted once today, so just keep that in mind. I'm a little bit shinier than normal. I film in front of really bright lights, so everything looks even more exaggerated, but I'm not mad at the skin. I look like I have on like a full coverage BB cream or a really moisturizing foundation. Dare I even say, I kind of feel like it reminds me a lot of the hydrating longwear foundation. Never mind the fact that it's orange, this thing separates, that's beside the point. I went into this review thinking this right here is my favorite complexion product from Fenty to date, this foundation. And I always compare something new to like what my favorites are. Would I replace it compared to my favorite? Before, like when I first, first ended the tutorial, I was thinking, nah, I would never give up hydrating for this powder. But now I'm looking respectfully. It looks the same. It's the same finish. It has about the same coverage. It has the same amount of healthy glow. This to me is almost like the powder version of this product. I guess that was unexpected. I didn't go into that thinking that this is what I would get. I wanna see what happens when I do this because I haven't been able to wear a mask today. Okay, so it only really came off very minimally and let me do that again. Wow, that's not a lot of transfer at all. Okay, let me calm down. Um, all right, so minimal shine. I actually like it. It was looking a little too powdery earlier. I actually preferred it with the shine, but nonetheless, I, I do like this product. It's very, very comparable to my favorite. I, I'm not gonna lie, but I can get the same finish and the same look with less effort with the liquid versions. So would I chuck the powder foundation? No, I actually really like it. And this was kind of like an unexpected pleasant surprise. I'm shook. I was not expecting to be satisfied, but I am. I'm a believer. I already know what time it is with the cream glosses, gang, gang, gang. These are amazing. These are really good. They smell great. I think you can really never go, like Fenty has innovated so well two things. Their lip products, okay, and their complexion. I want them to keep the same energy. I feel like they had a moment where they were, you know, kind of experiencing a dip. <clears throat> courtesy of that Galaxy collection. No, actually Galaxy was cute. Galaxy was cute, but then they had the Moroccan eyeshadow palette phase and it got, it, it, we deviated a little bit, but I feel like we're starting to really get, I feel like the original momentum of Fenty is being replicated with this launch. Like I actually really like this launch. It definitely made up for those bronzers because I did not like, I did not like those cream bronzers and people tried to tell me that I was wrong, but let me tell you something, you come here for my opinion and nothing else. So if you come here for my opinion, respect it, please. Thank you. By the way, I can't help but feel the reason why my skin looks so good with this powder is because of the Belief Moisturizer. I really truly feel like moisturizing and prepping the skin really well is why I'm getting that glowy veil and I prefer the glow more than I do just the powder straight after use. Like I like the way that it looked a little shiny, a little hydrated. That's become kind of my signature over the past year. So I think that if you pair this with a good moisturizer and a good primer, it's gonna be crucial. If you have dry skin, I can't guarantee you'll love this product. I mean, you won't know until you try it. I know that I'm dry around here, but is that really truly a fair you know, representation? Not really, but I really hope that you guys found this review helpful. That's it for my review. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, concerns, anything I missed, I mean, I don't, it seems pretty straightforward. It's just powder. I hope I didn't miss anything. Holler at me in the comments down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. YouTube makes it incredibly hard. Even at 3 million subscribers for a lot of us to grow, especially black creators. If makeup is not what you want to see, let me know in the comments. Like I can switch it up. I can do stuff that is a little bit more different, more lifestyle. I'm all ears. I, I want to be all ears, but it's still like, it has to make sense for my channel. You know, like it can't be something that I've never done before, like horseback riding tutorials. You know, I don't, I don't know that's about horses. So yeah. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on today's video. If you wanna see more videos, I'm gonna link them right here. And because I know you ain't going nowhere. Oh, by the way, your girl's on TikTok. So find me at Jackie Ina. I'm Jackie Ina everywhere. Snapchat, back on Snapchat, TikTok, the gram, Twitter, every, every single platform you can think of, I'm on, except Clubhouse. I don't know about Clubhouse, it's a little sketch. I'll, I'll, I'll pray on that one.